Okay guys, this is Comrade 445 here. Uh, I'm building a gearbox to show you guys. Uh, I don't know what to call this series yet, because I'm probably going to do more just to show you what everything is. Because I'm not going over this and over that in this episode. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Now first, I'm just going to show you this so you guys can see it. This is an Echo 1 gearbox shell that came with came standard with an Echo 1 Stag 15 DMR, which is an M16 length AEG. Now, that's just inside. It came with bearings. I haven't changed those out. There's the Echo 1 logo. And I probably should, but you know, I can't afford it, even though I work at an airsoft place. So here we go. I'm going to start by putting in the cutoff lever. And that goes right here. And I gotta move this because it's in the way. But once you get this any reversal, or not any reversal, this cutoff lever in here, it's good to go. And it shouldn't give you any problems. Shouldn't. Now, that's the thing. I was working a gun over there the other day. And, uh, couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Replaced this a couple times. Different models of it. Putting a spring in the selector plate right here. So the spring goes in between the selector plate. And it's not going in right. And it basically just pushes this to cut off the gearbox from shooting any faster or any, or, uh, any more rounds than you want to. Which is a bad thing. Luckily that didn't go flying. Uh oh. It's a bad... Shit. The bad thing when... The gun's shooting too much and you put it on semi and it's still shooting too much because... It's on semi and it's supposed to be on semi. Now... That never comes out. Okay. What's this cutoff levers in? Right here. You can push this selector plate all the way forward and test it. Now when you test it, it should come back like that because you're pushing this forward. And I'm going to move on to this now. And this, it's kind of vague, isn't it? This is the trigger, trigger switch thing. Yeah. So great. I know, I'm so vague, I'm sorry, people. Let me just screw this in. There's only one screw, because it slides in under this. If I can move the screw, the yeah, wire's out the way. It screws in under, or not screws, it slides in under that, and it hooks on a pin right here, if you can't see it. Right there, the pin, and it slides under this piece. And then, that's just the main body. Here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Here is the trigger piece, which I have to take this whole part out to get this back in. Because I'm done. Yay! Yeah, I'm just going to slide that in right there. Everything slides in together once you know how it goes in. And again, this tiny little screw right here tightens down. Take this spring, push it over that pin right there. This is how a gearbox with a correct uh, trigger switch should look. Should go like that. Everything should move. This should move freely, and it shouldn't bunch up. And if you push your selector plate, which is this part, forward that this way, you should be able to push that down, and it comes straight back. push everything down how it's supposed to be because all these wires we don't want these pinched up because my gun won't shoot now I'm going to tell y'all this is my custom gun most of these pieces aren't stock but some of them are uh, and some of them are random pieces so let's see what should I do next 
I don't want to do the piston cylinder shit next. So this is a piston, uh, not a piston, a cylinder, and a cylinder head combo that I have. And I have it, you can see this, take some of this light away, it has Teflon tape around it. So it gets better compression because nothing's escaping. And it's not all the way in, but that's fine. Okay, this and all this is just stock. That didn't make any sense, did it? It's this and all this. Alright, um. Tap it plate. You all see that on this blue background? Tap it plate. This is a brand new tap it plate I got a couple days ago. Actually, about a week ago. Because I put a new gun together and I was like, hey, how about I take all the old pieces out of this gun and put it in a new gun? So I did that and the new gun works pretty good. Needs a new battery because the battery I have is a piece of crap. But once you get everything in here, and don't worry about jimmying the gearboxes, you're gonna have to do that. Uh, this should move freely. Sorry, I was off camera there. The tap of plate should move freely, allowing that to move freely. If it doesn't move freely, then something's wrong. And yes, move free. <laughs> ah. Figure this out here. There we go. You take that and you hook that around that the, the hook that's most likely on your tapper plate. And you slide that like that. I found this is the most efficient way to put this on. And that's in. And this is the tapper plate setup. Now this pulls it forward. See that spring right there? That pulls this forward. So. Now you gotta test if it pushes it backward. And this does, so we're good. Alright. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the gears in first. Most of them, anyway. And this first one is the spur gear, if I'm not mistaken. And that one is just the center gear. It's wide, it's flat, and it's got two levels on it. Got the pinion gear, and not the pinion gear, the sector gear, no, the bevel gear. <sighs> Sorry, it's the bevel gear that goes right here at the bottom of the gearbox by this spur gear. Yeah. And then we have this one, which I have to move everything for, because it's normally in here. Let me just put that in there. Make sure everything turns right. Let the spring fly all the way over across the room. Don't don't do that. Really don't do that. That's bad. Uh, yeah. Let me put this back in real fast. And these give me the most problem. These springs here, because they're just an issue. And once that's good. I have something to show y'all real fast. Now on this gear, there's a little knot. Not a knot, a, uh, a pin that sticks out of it, and everybody's like, what does that do? Well, when this gear comes around, pushes up against this, a tappet plate, and pulls it back. Now, the problem with this gun I had was when I put the new parts in, didn't pull the, the air nozzle far back enough. So, what you do is you get one of these, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's a little, it's called a uh, spacing cam, I believe. And it's just a little hollow piece of ring. Uh, yeah, it's just a hollow ring. And uh, you slide it over that, that notch, or not the notch, the pin. And it puts just enough uh, space in there to pull the thing back, pull the, the uh, tapping plate back and pull this air nozzle back to get the PV in the chamber. Uh, let's see. I gotta put the trigger in next because that's just the way I do it. And it's gonna be an asshole today, I bet you. It's like triggers are. Triggers are assholes. Well, just to me, anyway. And this one's not because it's 
awesome and it loves me. Uh, here, right here, this is what everybody's like, what the hell does this thing do? Right here, I got the anti-reversal latch. This little thing right here, everybody wonders what it does. I was excited when I started playing. And, uh, I took mine out of my gun one time to figure out what it does. And I figured it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it kind of, sound of, sounds kind of vague, but, uh, this is what it does. I'll tell y'all. It keeps the gearbox from, well, reversing. Or, your gears from reversing, giving your gearbox the actual power it has. So when you're shooting, pull it back, and you let go of your trigger for a second, it doesn't go, uh, just, just back in the piston. This locks these gears in, and makes the gun work better, or work all together. Once we've got all this stuff in, here's my piston with a polycar piston head, and it's ported. It's real nice. I like this one. I've had it for about uh, three months now. Just wipe some of the crap off of it. And uh, it's got full metal teeth. Now, uh, I don't have any of the pistons that I used to have because. Well, this is a new piston, brand new, only used it like three times. Just shooting in my backyard to make sure that everything works. It would get this far to about these four teeth right here. And then it would strip them and then bust some of these teeth. So it wasn't that good. And I didn't like it because it would break my gun. And I didn't appreciate it when it broke my gun. It's just, it's got a bearing in there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Like, probably not. But uh, there's a bearing in here for the spring, which is a regular pitch spring. I don't know if y'all can see that. There you go. It's in a regular pitch spring, so that it reduces vibration in the gearbox after you shoot. Now I'm going to put this stuff in and show y'all how to get it all set. Now this is an M140 spring because I'm crazy and I love crazy. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know if that's right. Oh, and this right here, this is a spring guide. Uh, it's just standard spring guide. It's got a s screw hole in the back back for, uh, for my my stock because I have a full stock on my M16. And okay, I'm gonna put this thing back on. Put the uh, Top cover of the gearbox back on, and I'm gonna pause it when I put all these screws back in. It's gonna be taking about 15 minutes to do because they're assholes. Honestly, I hate these hate the screws that I have in here because I'm gonna show you. Can y'all see this here? Uh, if you can see that, the star head. Here we go. Star heads. And, uh... It's proprietary Echo 1 gearbox design that they love to put in their gun. Be guns because, uh, they're trolls. And they don't want people opening up their gearboxes. Luckily enough, I have a star kit. So... This is me struggling with my gearbox. Because I hate it. Get everything right in there. The uh, spring guide should line up with everything right. Uh, put this in there to get it in. Because if you don't, you're going to be struggling for a week. Get everything lined up nice and neat. What's going on here? Sometimes you got to smack it. Gotta smack it. Sometimes a problem with airsoft. Something doesn't fit. But it's fine. There we go. It's fitting a little bit better. Now that's my problem right there. And I gotta redo this. I'm gonna pause this and uh, come back to y'all when I get this. 
Alright guys, I'm back. It took me about four hours. No, I'm just kidding. It took me about uh, 20 minutes to get this thing put back together and get all the screws in. It's having a little bit of trouble with the uh, piston. Wouldn't go on the rails right, but that happens. Now there's something I wanted to show y'all, and that's this right here. This air nozzle. If that doesn't go back that far, roughly, for inversion 2 gearbox, you need to find it, figure out what's wrong with it. Unless you have it made not to do that, or it's a longer or shorter air nozzle. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push this in here. I'm going to push my piston back. Which is kind of a challenge at this angle because it's camera angle, right? And I'm going to push this back as far as I can. I can't push it back very far with this screwdriver. But uh, that makes sure that this thing free f moves freely. The uh, piston. And it does. And it's my spring in there, a spring guide. All the bearings on the outside. Trigger should pull right. If you push your selector plate all the way forward, it shouldn't pull at all. Oh, what is that? Okay. It shouldn't make that noise. Yeah, and that's who it is, too. I'll be back with you guys because guess who? In a reversal latch, a little song bitch, popped out and is now free in my gearbox. So I gotta figure out what to do about that. I'll see y'all guys in a couple. Okay, now that everybody's in their place, uh, and hopefully nothing's rattling around because I'll get mad and I'll probably end this video and not post it. Uh, yeah, I got anger problems sometimes about this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's it's coming together. I'm gonna show you all how to put the gun back together. Well, first I'm gonna test this, and then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to put the gun and M16 airsoft AEG together. So, uh, I'm gonna show you how to test this right now. Okay, here we go. Now I am going to put these wires up under my motor grip. Put my motor into my motor grip. Screw the motor grip on before I put my motor in. And uh, make sure everything works properly before I assemble the whole gun. Because if you don't do this, I get the whole gun assembled and it'll be like, meh, not gonna work. And then you have to take the whole gun off fire. And I've done this before. And then it's not worth it. It's not just busting it. You know? Alright, here we go. I'm just gonna pause this until I get this out. Alright, now I have this hooked up to where I have my uh my motor grip hooked up to open gearbox. I can see everything in here. And then over here, I don't want to mess this up too much, but over here, I have my uh, battery connectors hooked up through my stock because I was too lazy to take it apart. And yeah, that's pretty much how I'm going to do this. Now what I'm checking for is mistakes and mess ups on my part. So I'm just going to get this and I'm going to test it. That doesn't sound right, does it? Man, that really doesn't sound right. Well, it sounds horrible. It smells like that, so that's not good. Let me back this motor off a lot. I'll take out my motor bolt or whatever you want to call it. Because it really does not sound good, huh? Huh. Terrible inversion. Much better that sounds. 
works better. Doesn't smell as bad, or it doesn't smell like burning electronics as much. I think the problem with this is that I just need new connectors and better wire because his wires are crap, honestly. I'm about to burn this gearbox up as it is. Actually, just this or the uh, trigger wire harness assembly. Kind of have to do this eventually. I'm going to have to buy a new one soon. I was kind of dreading it because it's probably going to cost me a little bit. But uh, I have people that I know that uh, will help me out. Ah, i got one thing to show you before I take this off. Right here. This is an Echo One PHX 140 spring. That's the spring that's in this gearbox. Over here. Where is it? And this spring is extremely powerful and it's at a regular pitch. Uh, they're really nice. I recommend them. But they're kind of expensive run on about. I think this one was 25, 30 bucks for me. Uh, probably 40 bucks for anybody else. But uh, it was definitely worth buying. I actually get range out of my gun now because I had, I think it was actually the spring over here. What is that, right? I mean, I can take this spring and I can compress it almost all the way down to my hand. It's crap. So, this new spring, it works good. I need a more powerful uh, motor, though, because it's, it smells like burning electronics every time I shoot it. It's a problem. Alright, I'm gonna save the boringness of me unscrewing this stuff. And, uh, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, don't put anything stupid. I'm not gonna be an asshole about it, but I'm not gonna let y'all put stupid shit up on my page. So, thanks guys.